In this video we're going to talk about multiplying polynomials and specifically we're going to look at a binomial times a trinomial and then maybe a trinomial times a trinomial. Um, we In the, another video I did we covered multiplying a binomial times a binomial which is a very special uh, type of multiplying. Well, I don't know if I'd call it special, but it has a special name called FOIL. Uh, first outside, inside, last. So if you need to see that, you could look up that video. Uh, I would just look up uh, binomial times a binomial or a FOIL in my uh, list of videos. But for this one, we're going to do a binomial. Let's say 3x minus 2 times a trinomial. How about 4x squared minus 6x plus 7. Alright, so we're going to be using our old friend the distributive property here. We need to take every term of the binomial and multiply it by the terms of the trinomial. Now a second ago I said, you know, a binomial times a binomial, which you've probably done a lot of, maybe. They're a little more common. Uh, you have two terms times two terms, so you end up doing two things times two other things, which is multiplying uh, four times. And so you end up with four terms, and that's where this FOIL thing comes from. We don't, we don't have a cute little word for a binomial times a trinomial. I suppose we could try to make one up, but um, in general, we don't have one. But the same procedure is going to take place where you're going to take each term of the binomial, these two terms, and multiply it by all three terms of the trinomial. So for example, we're going to take 3x times the 4x squared, then we're going to do 3x times negative 6x, and then we're going to do 3x times positive 7, and then we're going to do the same thing with the negative 2. We're going to take the negative 2 times the 4x squared, negative 2 times negative 6x, and negative 2 times 7. So each of these arrows represents a multiplication problem. So we have six little multiplication problems to do, unlike the binomial times the binomial, where it was four little multiplication problems. All right, let's do this. So 3x times 4x squared, that's 12x to the third. 3x times a negative 6x, and some of you might be saying, that's not a negative, that's a minus 6x. But remember, um, subtracting is the same as adding a negative. So when you see that subtraction sign, you really need to think of it as a negative 6. So a positive times a negative is a negative, so I get negative 18. And you could write plus negative 18, and then x times x is x squared. But I'm not going to write plus a negative 18, and most math books and mathematicians won't write plus a negative when you have adding a negative. It's the exact same thing as subtracting. So we just write subtract. It's a little cleaner. looks a little nicer. All right, 3x times a positive 7. That's a positive 21x. So I'm going to write plus 21. Now I'm going to do negative 2 times 4x squared. Negative 2. So when I multiply this 2, it's negative 2 times all these guys. So negative 2 times 4x squared is negative 8x squared. So I could write that negative 8x squared here where I left off, but a little organizational trick is to write it underneath the like term. I'm going to end up adding or combining these two terms together, so why not stack them on top of each other? It kind of helps keep things organized. And then I have a negative 2 times a negative 6x, so that's a positive 21x. I'm going to put that under, sorry, I said 21 because I was looking at that 21. It's 12. 2 times 6 is 12. I'm going to put that underneath the 21x so I can add those together and then uh, easily. And then a negative 2 times a positive 7 is a negative 14, so I'll write minus 14 there. So now if we combine our like terms. We got a 12x to the third, and nothing else will add with that or combine with that. I have these two x squared terms. I have a negative 18 and a negative 8, so that gives me a negative 26. And positive 21 plus 12 is 33x minus 14. So even though we had six terms after our multiplication, after combining like terms, we've narrowed this down to a four-term polynomial. This product is a four-term polynomial. All right, let's have you try one. Let's see how it goes. 
Let's do a binomial times a trinomial. Let's do, we'll put this in green. How about um, three, three y minus six x. This one's a little trickier, but that's okay. Four uh, y squared minus two x y plus seven x squared. All right, so pause the video and give that a try and then uh, restart it when you're ready to check it. All right, so it's gonna be the same procedure. We gotta take the three y times each of these three terms. So we'll start off with three y times four y squared. Let's see what, three times four is 12 and y times y squared is y to the third. Next one, three y times negative two x y. All right, well, three times negative two is negative six. Now I have y times x y. So I have a y times a y, that's a y squared. So it's x y squared. Kind of looks like a g. Let's fix that. I don't want that to look like a g. So we have x y squared. All right, last thing with the three y is to take the three y times positive 7x squared. So that's going to be a positive 21. And then I have an x squared and a y. And usually we write these in alphabetical order like that, x squared y. y x squared is the same thing as x squared y because of the commutative property. All right, we're done with the 3y. Now we need to take the negative 6 and distribute it into the parentheses here, multiply by everything. Negative 6 times 4y squared. That's going to be negative 24xy squared. So here's another xy squared term. Let's write that underneath there, negative 24xy squared. We're going to be able to combine these two terms together because they have the same variable and exponent combination. Next is the negative 6x times negative 2xy. All right, so watch out for these negatives. We have a negative times a negative, that's a positive. And we're gonna have an x times an x, which is x squared y. So that's gonna be able to be combined with this 21 x squared y. So I did 12 and 21 again. I must not be very creative with my numbers. Um, all right, x squared y. And then lastly, we have negative six x times a positive seven x squared. What does that give us? That gives us negative 42 x squared times x. That's x times x times x, x to the third. Add those exponents. OK, let's combine these up and see what we get. Well, we have our 12 y cubed and nothing. There's no other y cubed terms. And then I've got my x squared, x y squared term. So remember, when you're finding like terms, this is the piece that, think of this as like its last name, xy squared. And that guy's last name is xy squared. So we can put those together and negative 6 and negative 24 is a negative 30 xy squared. They're like in the same family or something. All right, as opposed to this guy, this is an x squared y. That sounds a lot like xy squared, but it's not the same. Maybe like Johnson and Johnston. I don't know. So this is this this is slightly different. So you can't you can't combine the purple circle ones with the blue circle ones. They have to be exactly the same. All right. So that gives me 33, and my last name is x squared y, and then I have my uh, x cubed family down here. So we got four families living on the block. And our answer is 12y cubed minus 30xy squared plus 33x squared y minus 42x cubed. And that's a binomial times a trinomial. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole example here, but I will tell you, let's say you wanted to do a trinomial times a trinomial. I think I kind of mentioned that at, at the beginning. Oh, maybe I'll go through it. Or maybe I'll just write out the answer. I don't need a 3 again. I'm doing a lot of 3s. Let's say you had a trinomial like um, x squared plus uh, 3x plus 2 times uh, x squared minus 4x 
minus 5. Well, you just do the distributive property again. That would be this x squared times all those, and 3x times all those, and 2 times all those. All right, if you want to pause the video and try that, go ahead. I'm just going to go through this really fast so you can check your answer if you want to check your answer. All right, here we go. x squared times all those would be x to the fourth minus 4x to the third minus 5x squared. Then 3x times all those would be 3, oh, I should put a plus there, or at least move it over, would be 3x to the third, 3x times 4x would be minus 12x squared, 3x times 5 would be minus, or negative 5 would be negative 15x, then the 2 times the x squared is 2x squared, the 2 times the 4, negative 4x is negative 8x, and the 2 times the negative 5 is negative 10. And if I combine all these up, I get x to the 4th um, minus x to the 3rd, minus 1x to the 3rd. What do I have here? I got negative 17 plus 2 is negative 15, and negative 22x and my minus 10, and that would be my answer. And so you could extend this out to 8 terms times 8 terms if you're a glutton for punishment. It's just distribute, 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 all right? And that's how you multiply polynomials. I hope this video was helpful.